Hey guys, Taki here. Recently, I did a post over on Twitter about this $99 DE10 clone, which is used for the Mr. FPGA project. A couple people wanted to see this in action, so I put together a short showcase just to show what this can do. Now a bit of backstory before we get started. A couple months ago I was planning on doing a big video on the DE10 and the entire Mr. FPGA project. This is a project that I've been following from the sidelines for a couple of years and I wanted to do a video showcasing all of the improvements that have been made in some of the higher end systems that this now supports. Now unfortunately for me this hardware has only gone up in price while I've been watching it from the sidelines. When I was originally thinking about picking up one of these they went for around $125 but this is now going for or north of 200 or 190 if you have a student discount. So that kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. After seeing that high price, I realized that this niche product was going to be even more niche because the cost was going to be off-putting for a lot of people that would otherwise be interested in what this could do. I started by inquiring if it was possible to make a more affordable version of this. And after a couple months of work, we now have this. Now officially this thing does not have a name right now. It is known internally as Mr. FPGA. It is primarily supposed to be a clone of the DE10 that just happens to be able to use the same software that this can use. Now even though this is a clone, there are some differences here. Some of them are more meaningful than others. If we just look at the ports here with the DE10 on the bottom, the micro and mini USB ports have changed over to a Type-C port for UART and a full-size USB Type-A for OTG. GPIO headers are still the same, but the JTAG port has changed over from a USB port to this header. Outside of that, there are still some other things that need to be switched over. You can see right now the Arduino header is using a male header, but that's gonna switch over to a female header just like the DE10 to make it compatible with things that use that. There are a few other things here that you won't be able to notice. This new board can be powered by 5 volt DC or 12 volt DC, whereas the original one can only be powered by 5 volt DC. There is a side benefit to this where the new board will use less power than the old one when they are both running the same game with the same RAM modules. This power savings just comes down to the higher efficiency of the DC to DC converter that's in the clone board. And this will usually save you about one to two watts of power. After I posted that picture online, the creator of the Mr. Project ended up reaching out to me with some suggestions for improvements to this board for later revisions. And the things that he ended up suggesting are going to go into a future retail version of this board. The first one is a USB header that will make it easier for this board to work with other IO boards that exist in this ecosystem. And the second one is a power header that will also make the entire process of using the accessories a bit better than it is on the real DE10. We'll come back to the board in just a bit, but let's now switch over to the RAM. Now the second biggest cost to getting into this entire Mr. FPGA project is the RAM module. Depending on what you want to play, you will need a RAM module, and the systems that I like the most need this RAM module. There are a few different versions of these RAM modules. This one that I have right here is one of the better ones. It is the version 3.0, I believe, and it uses Alliance RAM chips, which are able to clock up as high as you need for the higher end systems that I'm going to showcase in just a second. This board was also cloned for this project and you can see it right here. On the front we still have those good Alliance RAM chips but a lot of the passive components are a lot smaller. And you can see right here this is identified as Mr. SD RAM version 1.1. So this black one that I have here can go for up to $60 and this is usually the go-to one because it has the best reliability and the best performance. This clone version that uses the same quality RAM that will pass the same test that this one does should cost $15 when it goes for sale. And this is the one that I'm gonna be using in this video. We're gonna go to audio in in just a second, but I wanna explain my setup here. I have the $99 clone board with the $15 RAM module. This is the 128 megabyte stick and I'm gonna do the RAM test just to show you that it can run at the rated speed. Then we'll go through a system test just to showcase that this does in fact work. I have this cracked controller connected via USB to the OTG port and I have HDMI going over to this portable monitor and I'm gonna power this board by 12 volts. And here we are. So this is the system that I've been using for the last couple of days. I've been having a blast with this platform. If you've never used the Mr. FPGA project before, it is amazing. There is th nothing comes close to the experience that you can get out of this. And, and now that it's finally affordable, a lot more people are gonna be able to try this out for themselves. All right, let's start by going over into the utility section and then we'll go over to MemTest. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 140 megahertz. And if you're not familiar with this, this green counter just shows you that it's passing the RAM test. If it couldn't reach the speed that we need, then this bottom counter here would start increasing. And I can show you what that looks like by just increasing this up to a higher frequency. And as you can see, it's starting to error out right here. 
Okay, so we have no problem with the RAM. Let's now go through a quick little showcase of some of the things that I've been enjoying on this platform and some of the new things that it can do. I have these all inside a section called Favorites, and I'm going to do audio in now so you can listen to the games playing and you can see the picture quality on this screen. Still help train the Alaskan scouts. Passing on the skills to a new generation, huh? So as you can see, the board works. There are still some things that need to be tested internally, like the digital and analog I.O. boards, but everything seems good so far. There is still one hardware revision on the way, so I'm not fully sure when this will be available for sale. But in the interest of full disclosure, I'm a co-founder of the company that will eventually sell this and other consoles and handhelds built around the FPGA that this uses. I'll keep you guys updated on the status of this over on Twitter and the Mr. Discord server. Happy gaming, everyone. Talk you out.